we are actually discussing a concept called responsibility center mm. yes so responsibility center we talked about the cost center in fact that is the smaller segment uh, in a costing department it is actually the center to which costs being you know uh, collectively ascertained and accumulated likewise the revenue center would be taking care of you know earning uh, revenue for example if you talk about you know selling department sales department uh, basically they will be looking at uh, what is the revenue part where, or how the company is earning revenue with respect in respect to its selling aspect all that so such units are called as the revenue centers now profit centers will be taking care of the cost as well as the revenue aspect so when you are talking about the production as well as selling it includes something called as uh, profit because you will have some expense which is connected with your production as well as you will have revenue which is connected with your selling so when both these aspects are taken care by a center such centers are called as profit centers say for example maybe a subsidiary unit of a company which is involved in production of one product say hul as a company would be having uh, different uh, subsidiaries maybe one segment dealing with you no know, the detergent category one segment dealing with the other uh, bathing bar category so likewise they might be having different segment within the same company so each segment would be a profit center because they will have both the cost and the revenue connected with that particular product category so detergent wing will be having many n number like 7 to 10 products under that di in different brands so all that they will take care with respect to their uh, their cost as well as the sales the revenue so when that both is been taken care we sell we tell such centers as profit centers right if they are making loss of course that is for correction what we expect is to uh, to convert that center into a profit profitable one so that's why uh, a sub subunit or subsidiary of an organization can be called as a profit center or the organization as a whole if you want you can call that but for better control what you do is in an organization we'll uh, we'll classify that into different segments different segments in the sense one product category can be one segment which can be called as a profit center right likewise and uh, of course investment center is nothing but uh today sandra had discussed in her discussion regarding the expansion plan so investment center they would be mainly looking at the expansion plan of a particular business unit suppose if they want to you know expand to a new market or if they want to make an investment in a new product line all that aspect would be taken from the cost angle it would be taken by care by the investment center so these are some of the responsibility centers which you can find within an organization one cost center production unit is a cost center right uh, and uh, maybe accounting department is a cost center because you are assisting in the process of earning revenue production department is assisting by producing the product accounting department is assisting by supporting the uh, management with relevant information for bringing control so all these are small small cost centers within an organization as we dis we had a detailed discussion about that revenue center when we talk about revenue centers they are broadly looking into earning more revenue increasing the um uh, revenue for the company so they will come up with different strategies to increase the revenue to increase the sales of a company uh so that is uh, it can be sales or uh, selling for a manufacturing company it can be for rendering of service for a service industry so they will look up how to uh, enhance the revenue of that particular company profit centers they would be in charge of both cost and revenue so they are taking care of the profit aspect of a company now going with the investment uh, center they are mainly looking at how to grow your business how to expand your business what are the possible opportunities available with this company to go ahead to move ahead maybe to a new market maybe to a new segment maybe to a new uh, product line likewise so that is the basic responsibility of an investment center so these are some of the responsibility centers which you can find within an organization right now i'm going forward 
there are two aspects which we often use when we discuss about cost accounting. One is cost reduction. Second one is cost control. Now, reduction is always, you know, as the word says, it is finding new and new methods or ways through which you can reduce your cost. Maybe, suppose, uh, you know, the firm is having a uh, lot of expense with uh, respect to, you know, uh, resourcing of raw materials. So the firm may think of starting a warehouse in different locations where the resourcing is much cheaper. So the firm would be trying to find out more and more ways so that they can reduce the existing cost. Now, we know what is the impact of cost reduction. Ultimately, that will be reflected in your profit earning capacity. So that's why when you are thinking about increasing the margin, there are only two ways. One is you can increase your sales. Second one is you can reduce your cost. So a firm would be thinking in both these ways. So when a firm is trying to reduce the cost, by innovating, by bringing new and new methodology, maybe new techniques, maybe new type of raw materials, maybe new customers. There are different methods. All that can be put under cost reduction. So the ultimate objective is bringing down your cost as far as possible. Right. Now coming to cost control. Control, you have to remember that it will always be done with a standard. You will lay down a standard. You will maybe you will have a budget and you are trying to control your cost based on that set standard. Suppose if you are deviating from that, you inform or you take the right decision at the right time so that deviations are minimized. You are brought back back to your set standard. So control is always about setting a standard and uh, ensuring that the firm is performing as per the standard set. Okay. Whereas the reduction you will be maybe very innovative. You will bring more innovative ways of reducing your cost so that ultimately that can be beneficial for the firm. So these two words, even at, at times we use interchangeably, but they carry two different meanings. Right. Ultimately, everything falls as, you know, to increase the profit earning capacity of the company, to increase the performance of the company. Ultimately, both these methods or both these techniques aim at increasing the profitability of a company right so that is just to know about what is the terminology all about now coming with uh, you know uh, types or techniques of costing now what we have to understand is costing is done for ascertainment of cost now cost data becomes meaningful for companies in the same line of business only when it is done in similar way. Only when cost ascertainment is done in a similar way. For companies, maybe, you know, uh, if I'm going with uh, one type of cost ascertainment and a similar company going with another type of cost ascertainment, comparison of my cost data with that company is pretty difficult because I don't know with, with met what method the company has gone with. So likewise, the type or techniques of costing is adopted in order to make the comparison easier, in order to make the comparison meaningful. Right. So there are different types of costing or techniques, different techniques which we use for you no know, cost ascertainment. So uh, uh, the first one, going with the first one, uniform costing is, as the name indicates, Similar industries or companies within a similar industry, within the same industry, adopting one method of cost ascertainment, one uniform costing technique. Right. So uh, maybe they are they are uh, charging their cost, they are treating their cost uh, accumulation all in a similar way. Now, what is the benefit of uh, using this comparable? The information, the cost information is comparable between these firms. See if the company is having many subsidiary units and if each subsidiary unit is going with different type of costing or they are using different principles while recording the cost information, automatically it might, might be difficult for uh, these companies to make a comparative evaluation of their performance. In order to avoid that, uniform costing technique is used uh, where the, they would be following similar costing principles and practices. 
Now the ultimate objective, the nutshell in that is to facilitate comparison. For example, companies in uh, uh, power production or companies uh, rendering railway services or transportation services or companies going with electricity production. All of this, all of these companies, if they go with similar costing principles and practices, it would be easy to compare which one is performing better. So that is actually what we call as uniform costing technique. Similar companies going with similar type of principles and practices within the cost, cost, within the cost accounting or within the framework of costing. Right. So that is uniform costing. Now, marginal costing, basically, as you know, our cost can be classified into fixed and variable cost. Irrespective of fixed cost, uh, irrespective of our production, fixed cost will remain same. For example, the rent we pay for the building which we have hired for our factory. Whether we go with the production or not, that rent needs to be paid maybe at the beginning of the month. They will not give us a reduction because we did not produce anything in that month. Maybe this pandemic is a different case. Some of the firms are, are availing the benefit of not paying the rent. That is different. In the normal condition, if production happens automatically, uh, uh, no, if production happens or not, automatically uh, the firm which has hired a building for rent they have to pay the rent at the beginning of every month, maybe at the end of every month. That is a decided as, as decided by the parties. But that payment is fixed. Right. Likewise, there are certain categories of expense that are fixed, whereas other categories of expenses like you no know, raw material cost, it may vary with the level of our production. When we use more raw materials, our, uh, our very... <coughs> our cost associated with raw material will be more. When we use less raw material or when the production is less, automatically raw material cost will be low. So those are something which is dependent on the level of operating. Likewise, we categorize our expenses into fixed as well as variable. Now, marginal cost basically, because fixed costs always remain there, we cannot bring much control in that. It's already fixed right maybe in the long run we can think of a change but in the short run it will not be possible to bring a change over there but variable cost we can have effective control if you plan nicely so marginal costing is a technique which takes care of this variable component of the cost that is it takes care of the changes that has been brought in in the cost structure because of maybe increase in the activity or because of reduction in the activity because of a change in the existing activity, it takes care of that change. That is basically the variable cost, right? So uh, what is the purpose of this? The only purpose is to have a better control in your cost occurrence, to better control in the cost management, right? So marginal costing is the technique which takes care of the changes, the effect of changes that is happening because of a change in a level of activity, maybe a level of activity, type of activity, right? So that change only is taken care in order to, it's actually the same logic of management by exemption. You are taking care of the most important factor that are being affected by a particular activity. Suppose if I'm going to say that I want to expand my business. So automatically, if you are going with this marginal costing technique, it will take care of what is the change that is going to happen in the company's financial structure because of this new market or because of this new level of activity? There are certain things which cannot be changed. It's there, as I said, no, the factory rent or the uh, other fixed charge, the insurance which you are paying for your building, that will remain same. But there are certain changes that can be evaluated to see whether that is good or bad. When a costing technique takes care of that changes, we call that as a marginal costing technique. Now, standard costing, as all of us know, it's nothing but uh, we set a standard, we see whether we are deviating from that. If, devi if deviation is happening, we find out the reason for that deviation 
and take measures to control the deviation or to bring back to the planned standards that is actually standard costing method so these firms will always have a in fact when i look from the perspective of a firm operating in uh, maybe a corporate or a firm operating in a market it can be seen that every firm will have some standards maybe those standards are set based on your previous performance maybe based on your competitors performance but that is there present with every firm so that type of costing uh, technique for controlling your efficiencies what we call a standard cost so you set a standard uh, every time your performance is compared with the standard set to understand whether you are you are moving in the right track right uh, now historical costing uh, that is also something which you can find in every firm as the name in that in, in, uh, indicate is actually ascertainment of the cost after its occurrence you look uh for the cost after its occurrence in fact uh, this is not advisable for a better control but this will be helpful for us to predict our or to plan for our future that is you, you look back and what was the cost for raw material in the last operating cycle that will help you to plan for your future that will help you to plan for your next operating cycle or at what interest the creditors gave us you no know, that particular facility or at what percentage uh, we got that uh, benefit from a particular group of uh, debtors so that actually is looks into what is what was the actual cost in the previous operating cycle or in the last cycle and i am planning for my activity based on that for the next one maybe 10 percentage increase because of costing raw material i will say that if the uh, if the total cost of production was say uh, if it was 150000 now i understand that there can be a 5% change in that because of the increase in the raw material cost so i will do uh, 150000 into no 105 by 100 so 105% that can be my total cost expectation so that's why i'm looking back to plan for my future now the next two uh, it is very uh, we are going to learn that in detail but uh, the first one direct costing is charging all of our direct expenses to our production process or to the product to the particular service that is direct cost can be cost of direct labor cost of direct material it can be direct expenses so for example if i use 10 quintals of raw material for a particular product for manufacturing a particular product that will be directly charged to the uh, cost of my that particular production unit how many units i have produced in that that cost will be involved but when i am talking about uh, uh, there are there are other indirect costs which can be incurred during my production process say for example i had appointed uh, five supervisors you know uh, for uh, for overall management of my factory it is not related to a product a particular product or activity but i wanted them to uh, take care of the entire functioning of my factory so that is not related to one particular product at the same time the benefit of that is uh, you no know, allocated to all the products and process that has happened in my organization so that will be my indirect expense that indirect expense i will not charge it there even though the for, uh, the impact of that will be there in my final product but i will not directly charge that to that particular product in fact it will be totally looked upon as a reduction my from my uh, profit it will be an expense that will be reduced from my you know total revenue but directly when i charge my cost of a particular product that will not be considered overall that will be reduced from the from the revenue of the total units or maybe the revenue of the whole maybe i have 2 3 4 units in my production i will take care of the revenue of all these and from that i'm going to reduce the uh, the cost i have incurred for you no know, for the supervisor so likewise in short if i say direct costing takes care of charging all direct cost to my operations or to my product and i am just not considering my indirect expenses to any specific product it will be considered as a whole sum it will be considered as a whole and its impact would be on the total profit of that organization 
now when i'm talking about direct costing is charging only the direct cost absorption costing is just the reverse in absorption cost absorption costing we take care of both direct and indirect when we are uh, accounting for a particular product or services we charge all but proportionate allocation is being made it's not that uh, no uh, the entire direct expenses are charged to a particular product or service it's not proportionate allocation which you will understand in a way, in a better way when we do it proportionate allocation is done to the particular product or process so it's just the reverse here we consider both direct and indirect when we are accounting for the cost of a particular product or service so i repeat uh, today we were trying to discuss about the types of costing in fact why do we need is to have a better understanding of how cost is ascertained by different industries or different business groups the first one is uniform costing it's nothing but similar costing principle are used in you no know, say industry doing same type of business say i said the example of company going with the production of electricity or company uh, service industry companies going with rendering transportation services if i use different different methods or different different principles or practices it will be difficult for me to compare the cost of company a doing transportation service with company b doing the same kind of services so it is actually an understanding that these are the some common principles and practices that will be followed in particular industry of similar nature that is actually uniform costing marginal costing is you are taking care of only the changes the, the changes that are going to happen because of the occurrence of a particular event you are going to uh, take care of only the changes and then in case of standard costing uh, we set a standard we try to find out whether we are performing as per the standard and uh, the historical costing here is it's a concept where we take care of the occurrence the past cost ascertainment we are looking into how the cost has incurred in the past and this information is used by us for bringing a control in our future planning and uh, direct costing is a, a is a technique where we take care of all the direct expenses and we charge all the direct expenses to a particular product or processes and now the last one is just the reverse of direct costing absorption costing here we charge both direct and indirect expenses but in case of indirect expenses it will be a proportionate allocation to different units that we are going to learn there are different methods of charging uh, indirect expenses to the process or production that we will learn at a later stage so these are the broad types or techniques or as you say no some common principles and practices that need to be followed in order to ensure that the cost data is comparable or it is no uh, you can take decisions by making comparison between different industries 